Good morning. It is good to be with you today. Last week we talked about Jesus' names and Christmas carols, who he is, why he's come, because this is the Christmas season, and so that is what we will continue to talk about this week, Jesus. Because again, Christmas is when the whole world pauses, because something has happened that has not happened before. And so the world pauses. Even though Jesus was born more than 2,000 years ago, the world still pauses. I know, it feels like things speed up with Christmas. There's so many things to do, people to see, Christmas cards to send, all of those things. Yet, the world pauses. Because we want to make sure that we acknowledge what God has done for us. So today, we're going to look at one of Jesus' names. Last week we looked at Day Spring. Today we're going to look at his name, Emmanuel. Why Emmanuel? Well, if you're familiar with Isaiah 7 14, God says, Behold, a virgin is going to bear a son, and you will call his name Emmanuel. And then this is repeated in Matthew. Why Emmanuel? Well, it's nice because Emmanuel, like Jesus, tells us exactly what's happening. Jesus, of course, is Yahshua, which means Jehovah saves. So every time you say Jesus, it's Jehovah saves. But Emmanuel reminds us of one thing, and it reminds us of what it means. Emmanuel, El, God, God with us, or with us, God. Why? Because God wanted to make sure that in all of the stuff that goes on in our daily lives, that he is with us, that he is for us. So here's a couple reasons why God chose Emmanuel. Because it helps us on a daily basis to understand that God is with us, that God is for us. Emmanuel. Say that name with me. Emmanuel. God with us. Say it again. Emmanuel. God with us. Now, here's the last time. He said, we're going to change it this time. Because we're going to say, God with me. Ready? Emmanuel. God with me. Emmanuel. God with me. Sometimes when we do John 3.16, we change the words a little bit. And we say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But we make it more personal. For God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son, that as I believed in him, I would not perish and have everlasting life. And that's the idea here. God with me. God with us. So here's a few reasons why we need to understand God with us. The first one is simply this. God is a big word. Incarnate. Meaning that he became flesh. I love it when John says in 1 John, he was touchable. That which we touched. That which we knew. Why? Because God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. He put on the same skin that we have. He came with the same dependencies that we did. Born of a virgin. Born of a baby. So that he would understand and be like us that he would know and understand us, that we would know and understand him. God is touchable, real. Look at John 1.14 and 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. The second one is this. Hebrews picks this up as, as does Revelation 21, that he tabernacled amongst us. He lived amongst us. As you read the, in the gospel stories, you realize that Jesus walked everywhere. He knew people. He knew, the, he knew the guys at the shop. He knew the people around him. He knew the storekeepers. He would go and be with people. Why? Because he's living amongst us. Then Hebrews helps us here again, Hebrews 4.15, that Jesus is a high priest. Now, how does someone become a high priest? Well, first, understand what a high priest does. A high priest is there to represent God to us and us to God. Think Yom Kippur. 
the holy day for our Jewish friends, where they go into the Holy of Holies and make sacrifices. Well, Jesus is our high priest because there's no longer a need to go into the into the Holy of Holies because Jesus has full access because of this blood for us. Because <clears throat> Jesus is our high priest, having experienced everything that we have experienced. Therefore, when we hurt, we can go to Jesus. Jesus, our high priest, we need you to speak to us. Jesus, we need you to help the Father understand who we are, what is going on. Why? Because it is the Father's love and mercy, his grace, and all of those things, his forgiveness, that we all receive in Jesus, our high priest. Then Philip and the disciples help us too. Philip, in John 14, says, show us God. I know as a young person, I always want to see God. I, I lived, I grew up in Cleveland, and we had several large, beautiful cathedrals, particularly down in the Case Western Reserve area. And at night, you drive down through, and at night, they would they put the big floodlights up on them, and the, the, the tops of them would just shine. They were green, and they just glow in the darkness with the white light on them. And I recall several times asking my dad as we drive through, says, is that where God lives? My dad, of course, would say no. And said, well, how do we see God? You know, how, how, how do we? And Philip asked Jesus that same question. Show us the Father. And Jesus wisely says, Philip, if you have seen me, you see the Father. Now, God is a spirit. Yes, he is. And we worship him in spirit and truth. That's how we see him. Why? Because we know that he became flesh and dwelt amongst us, that we may know and experience the Father. Jesus became touchable. And so as we see each other, we see Christ in each other. We see the Father as he opens our eyes to see him in all of creation around us as he does his handiwork. Why? Because we get to see the Father because of what Jesus has done. Why Emmanuel? God made flesh that we may see him and know him. But here, let's go further. The next one is this one. It's identity. That we may know who and whose we are. That's John 14, 20. Who we are. Yes, it tells us that we are the children of God. Yes, because we of what Jesus Christ has done. But it also goes to our spiritual identity. It goes to our personal identity. We get to identify ourselves as God's children, we get to define ourselves, which is even more so than just saying who we are. It is how we define ourselves because of what Christ has done for us and in our lives. Because he is Emmanuel. Because remember, God with me. Now here's the next one. Because of Jesus Christ's life, his birth, his death, his resurrection, we have Christ living within us. What does Paul say? Is Christ in you, in Colossians, the hope of glory. Christ dwells within us. That's why there are times when, as Christians get together, friends get together, you just feel the camaraderie. You feel the Spirit of God in you, burning in your hearts. Why? Because you know that the Father is there, because He lives within you. That is how the next we know God. We know him because of who he is and how he shows up in our midst, how he shows up in the places where we need him. Why? Because God has been made flesh to dwell amongst us. And then here, lastly, to fulfill the promises of God. Because God promised it. He promised it in Isaiah. But go back further than Isaiah. Go all the way back to Judges 6.16. God promises us the Messiah. Go even further back. Go all the way back. Go to Genesis. Where God says, he will crush your head. He will bruise his heel. That's our Savior. God saying, he will be made flesh. That you may know him. That you may know me. Let's go back to the beginning again. Say it with me. Emmanuel. God with us. Emmanuel, God with me. Emmanuel, God with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for such a wonderful practical name that, Lord, we would know that you are with us. Thank you 
for being our Emmanuel, the one who loves us so. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.